Okay, um, Lonnie Thompson, and I'm a professor at Ohio State University in the School of Earth Sciences. And the Earth Sciences that you choose to study are the giant features of our landscape, the, the tallest mountains on the planet, and the ice that covers them, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Over the last 30 years, we've conducted 51 expeditions and uh, have worked in 15 different countries in doing that. So. Uh, it's been a learning experience. When we started, we worked in Antarctica and Greenland. We still work there, mm -hmm. but I really like the challenges of working in uh, another culture uh, uh, in and in, in setting up the logistics, just making it happen in a part of the world where it hasn't happened before. So uh, as far as being able to get to these mountaintops and recover the ice core records. And we're very fortunate to have uh, excellent colleagues in all the countries where we work that help us get over some of these logistical challenges. And that's something that, like right now, especially as we're all looking at global climate change, I'm sure there is much more collaboration globally between scientists because this isn't just, oh, American scientists trying to figure this out. It's a global problem. It is a global problem, and, and I think that, that uh, uh, there's a concern. Uh, I mean, we now get actually get requests from countries mm -hmm. to come and drill their ice fields before they disappear to get the climate history from them. Mm -hmm. so, so that certainly has made it easier as far as getting the permits needed to get into these various countries. Mm -hmm. But it is a global problem, and our teams are international. Uh, so we have uh, Russians and Chinese and South Americans, the Peruvians. Uh, uh, we have uh, our Sherpas from Nepal, mm -hmm. and we all work together to accomplish these missions. So I'm, I'm absolutely convinced when the world gets on the same page on the issue of global climate change, we can make a difference. But we aren't going to make that until we're all on the same page. And we're not there yet. Right. But it's getting there. The infrastructure is, seems to be in the process of being built. It's, it's changing. It's changing very rapidly. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid that we may be a little late on this issue, and I think uh, in our future there's a lot of adaptation that's going to have to take place. But the place we just drilled in western uh, China is at the headwaters of the Ganges and the Indus River, and uh, there are millions and millions of people who live downstream and depend on that water from the glaciers, especially right. in the dry season. You've been looking at the ice that you've brought back from the tops of these glaciers, and What's happening? Well, there, there's a very clear story in the tropics, and the, and the tropics are a very important part of the Earth. In fact, we have 50% of the surface of the planet between 30 north and 30 south. We have 6.5 billion people living on the planet, 70% live in the tropics. So it's an area where we need to understand natural climate variability as well as uh, human induced changes. And from these cores that we drill, we get a, a record, a history, and we can put uh, the 21st century into a time perspective mm -hmm. uh, that you can't get from any other source in this part of the world. So when you, we do that, what we see is the last 100 years, and particularly the last 50 years, have been very unusual temperature-wise. In fact, it's the warmest it's been in 2,000 years uh, in the Himalayas, through the Andes in uh, South America, and yeah. through Africa. So tremendous change taking place that we can see in the archive, but we are also monitoring the glaciers, mapping what's happening to the ice. And that's a very disturbing story because they're not just retreating, they're accelerating in the rate at which that ice is being lost. And uh, that's, uh, and, and what makes it particularly important is that all of our models for the future warming uh, due to increases in greenhouse gases mm -hmm. show that that warming is higher, larger, in the mid to upper troposphere in the tropics. And that's where these glaciers are setting. And every one of them is retreating. And when we have the time-lapse data, the rate of ice loss is accelerating. And so we think we're seeing the first fingerprints of that warming being reflected by the behavior of these glaciers. What can we expect for how long they're going to last? Well, I think uh, if you look at the ice fields on Kilimanjaro, they'll be gone before 2020. Uh, and, and regardless of what we do as human beings, if we ever get on the same page and actually starting to make, make some headway on emissions, we already have enough warming built into the system because there's a lag in the system, uh, in the climate system, that these glaciers are going to disappear. 
And therefore, those people will have to adapt to the loss of those glaciers. Now, in South America, in Peru, 70% of the tropical glaciers on Earth are in Peru. That's the headwaters of the Amazon. Uh, there's a lot of people potentially impacted by uh, the loss of that ice. Right. And in there also, there will have to be a lot of adaptation as we go in the future. Now, some of the science that you're using, what are, um, are, are there technologies advancing that are going to help you um, get at the, the research questions that you're looking at? You know, find out you know, what is contained, the information that's in the ice telling us about our climate and our, and our environment. Is there anything that can help us figure things out faster? <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately, I, I, the technologies that are out there, you know, they continue to develop, become lighter weight. In fact, uh, there's no other time in human history that one person could have run 51 expeditions in these remote parts of the world. Uh, it's just that we have lightweight Kevlar cable for our drills. We use solar power to drive the drills. Well, these are recent technologies. Uh, at the university, we have class 100 clean rooms where we uh, measure the chemistry and do the dust work. We have uh, freezers where we have 7,000 meters stored at minus 30 degrees C. And one of the reasons we're keeping an archive is that glaciers in places like Kilimanjaro are going to disappear. Within 15 years, if you need a sample of ice or some new technology, new technique that's come along, you're not going to find it in the natural world. You'll have to come to this archive to get it. So uh, uh, we, we fully believe that 20 years from now, uh, we'll, have, we'll be, uh, have a lot more knowledge about the, how the climate system works. We'll have a lot better technology. But we also believe a lot of these archives will be gone.